Hello and welcome to Emma's ESL English. So yesterday we read Terry Pratchett's Father Christmas's Fake Beard um, and it's the, in fact I was incorrect, the illustrator is not the same as Roald Dahl but instead Mark Beach it looks an awful lot like Quentin Blake's illustration, so <sighs> sorry about that, Mark Beach. Anyway, so we are starting at the beginning. As I mentioned, um, these are written like emails. So a lot of the, and, and we've got, um, they're talking to personnel managers, shop assistants, things like that. So a lot of the vocabulary that we're going to come across is actually relevant to business, bizarrely. We also have a lot of euphemisms in this book. A euphemism is something that we say to mean something else. And we're starting with a euphemism. So the first one is Mr. Keg, Trumpet, who usually plays Father Christmas, is currently helping the police with their inquiries into why 150 video recorders were found in his allotment shed. Uh, allotment shed, in the UK, we have areas where people who don't have gardens or who don't have big gardens can have their own space outside to grow vegetables. Um, it usually looks a little bit like a field, but there are, they're about six foot by six foot. Some of them are a lot bigger than that. Um, space for your, you specifically to grow whatever you want, six foot. They're a lot bigger than six foot by six foot. My, my measurements are terrible. Um, anyway, so it's a space outside, not near your house. Um, it's not it's not your garden. It's somewhere else. And that's an allotment. So he has a shed on that place that he has got 150 video recorders, which is obviously not where you'd usually keep video recorders. So that gives us a tip into is currently helping the police with their inquiries. This is... Um, an HR okay way to say he's probably been arrested for theft and is in a lot of trouble and may well be going to jail. <laughs> so it's very common, right? That HR can't tell us exactly what the truth is. If we say he's currently helping the police with their inquiries, it's a euphemism for he's probably been arrested and is in a lot of trouble, um, but it makes it sound like it's not so bad. Okay, and he says that that leaves us very short-handed in the Father Christmas area. So um, short-handed means we don't have enough employees. So it's very, um, very common to use in a situation where um, maybe a lot of people have gone off sick or um, suddenly people left or at Christmas time when a lot of people are busy then we can say we're very short-handed. And he says that he has, uh, he tells us all about Mr. Nicholas, who's applied, says he's from Lapland. And he says, I have engaged him to start on Monday. So I have engaged him means I have employed him. Um, so we can engage someone in employment. Um, I have engaged him. And then he um, sends a message. This is still the personnel manager. Sends a message. Personnel manager is sort of an older term for HR manager. Uh, sends a message to Mr. Nicholas, who has now started as a temporary sales assistant in the toy department. And what we understand from the story is that probably Mr. Nicholas who we all kind of know is really Father Christmas or Santa, is supposed to be giving the children a ho, 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 hello, little boy or girl, have you been good, and one toy. But what is actually happening is he's telling them ho, 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 and help yourself to whatever toy you like, whether you're a boy or girl, he doesn't mind. Um, and obviously this is not, <laughs> not good for a shop. <laughs> so in, in, in the second thing, hello, little boy, girl, person, and a discretionary, 
have you been good? So if something is discretionary or at your discretion, it means that it's your choice. You may say, have you been good? Or you may not say, it's up to you. How do you feel today? Who are you talking to? And another euphemism, but there are commercial considerations here, which I do not think you have fully understood. Commercial considerations, of course, is a euphemism for we're supposed to be making money here, not giving away stuff for 75 pence. He's wanting to know about different things. We already know one of the other toys is $17.99. So obviously the Super Laser Zapicon and My Little Madden Polecat dressing table set, a typical Terry Pratchett name for something, um, are pretty cheap toys. And that's all the kids are supposed to be getting. Um, okay. To give in her notice. Okay, so we've moved on. He's again messaging Mr. Nichols and he's telling us that Mrs. Tracy Williams, sales assistant, is very upset with Miss Nicholas. She is not enjoying her time working with this Father Christmas and she wanted to give in her notice. So to give in her notice means to quit. She wanted to resign from her job and he has managed to persuade her with some difficulty not to resign. And her duties end with ushering children into the grotto. Ushering just means sort of helping, come this way, please, like that. So just helping, making sure the kids go into the grotto. We then have uh, from Jay Chan, toy department, to the personnel manager. He starts, dear Mr. Picklins, he is a loony. This is very inappropriate language to say that somebody is crazy. So very British to loon or loony is very British to say that someone is crazy. So in this case, he is saying that uh, Mr. Nicholas is crazy. He doesn't uh, like anything that he's saying. And he goes on to say that he was um, obviously looking at one of the toys, which is a um, Maykill death cannon and um, asking what it was for. And Jay Chan had explained that when the hero, it's what the hero uses to blow people away if they park their cars on double yellow lines. So um, in the UK, double yellow lines, two yellow lines at the side of the road means we shouldn't park there. Um, so to blow people away is another euphemism, right? For killing people with a gun, we blow them away. Um, and then we go on to Albert Callaghan, head of security, who starts his email with, he's definitely up to no good. This is a really common phrase for when we think someone is doing something bad, but we don't know what they're doing. So we don't trust someone, but we don't actually have any evidence not to trust them. So we say they're up to no good. And he goes on to say that someone is pinching tools and stuff from the do-it-yourself section. Pinching means stealing. So um, someone is stealing tools from the DIY section of the shop. Obviously, this is a department store. So there's a lot of different areas to this shop. Um, and... Then we have, hang on, I missed a bit maybe. Lifts. I just wanted to say that, um, that a lift is uh, British English and the elevator is American English, but I can't even find the lift. So somewhere in here, there is a lift. And then we get to the end of the story which does come in in the middle. You can see here dot, dot, dot. So this is obviously the middle of an email that we're coming into um, where uh, Mr. Picklins is telling the managing director, Mrs. K. Arnold, the whole story of what happened on the 24th of December when Mr. Nichols came to work or rather when Mr. Nichols left work. Um, and he tells us, that there was snow in the toy department, the grotto fell in, the um, 
Mr. Nichols was riding on a sledge drawn by eight living reindeer, which was baffling because their reindeer were plastic, remember? And he was last picked up by air traffic control over Southampton. Picked up usually means to pick something up. And indeed, if this was the police, if he was picked up by the police, then that would mean that they uh, arrested him and took him from the street and took him to the police station. But in this case, it's air traffic control. So what they're saying is that when, um, you know, air traffic control or have a radar and are checking the area, who is flying in the area, then they can pick up things that are flying in the area. So in this case, picked up means to be seen by on whatever instruments they have, the air traffic control saw Mr. Nichols flying in his sleigh with eight reindeer across the skies in Britain, which of course is a problem because Santa Claus doesn't exist, right? If you're a grown up, you know that Santa Claus doesn't exist. But here, Mr. Picklins and the whole store have spent most of December with Santa Claus, it turns out, which is not okay. <laughs> A, a running theme in Terry's books is when adults see reality and they don't like it, so they pretend they haven't seen it. And that's exactly what happens here. Our final paragraph. I, of course, agree with you that the whole matter had better be forgotten, since it clearly could not have happened. Anyway, Mr. Chan now thinks he is a teapot. So we have a few things going on there, right? I agree with you. So obviously they've had a previous conversation outside of this email. The whole matter, meaning everything to do with Mr. Nichols and Christmas, had better be forgotten, meaning we're not telling anybody. We're not talking about it. We're not writing it down anywhere, apart from these emails. We're not going to call the police. We're not going to do anything. We're going to pretend it never happened since it clearly could not have happened. So we're, we all agree that if this happened, then we're crazy because Father Christmas doesn't really exist. So it can't have happened and we're not crazy. So we're just going to pretend that it didn't happen and everybody is sane. And that's the best thing that we can do. However, Mr. Chan is not sane. Mr. Chan now thinks he is a teapot. So they're all going to forget it ever happened so they can pretend they're still sane and not crazy. But Mr. Chan is too far. He's already thinks he's a teapot. So that's how he's coping with this situation. <laughs> when Mr. Chan met Father Christmas, he went crazy. <laughs> okay, let's leave it there. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that very, very silly story <laughs> from Terry Pratchett. Um, it is silly and fun, <laughs> but still Christmassy. Anyway, I will see you next week. Have a great weekend. Bye.